Guys, let us look at uh, the classification of drugs to treat peptic ulcer. So, first of all, you have uh, the ones that reduce gastric acid secretion. Okay, the ones that reduce gastric acid secretion. These are very, very important class of drugs. Okay, so, H2 antihistaminics. Okay, H2 antihistaminics. Antihistamines. Okay. Let me tell you here the uh, what you have to focus on is 2. Sometimes you forget this word 2, correct? And you forget that it is anti. Right? 2. It is 2. H2 antihistamines and it is anti. So it is it is anti. Don't forget that word. Antihistamines. H2 antihistamines. You have ra ranitidine, simitidine. Ranitidine and all are prescribed very commonly. So you should know that one. Okay. Ranitidine, simitidine, you should know. Then coming to proton pump inhibitors. These are actually, they have overtaken uh, H2 antihistamines. So you should know proton pump inhibitors also. So let us look at this one. Proton pump inhibitors. These are what I told you. They are the first line of drugs almost for peptidine pep peptic ulcer. Omiprazole. Lansoprazole, omiprazole, S omiprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, and rabiprazole. We have looked at these in the uh, video already, right? We have separate videos of that. Rabiprazole, dex rabiprazole. Now, omiprazole is the prototype drug. However, all the others have higher bioavailability. So, others are actually having better um, bioavailability. Now, uh, let us just revise these. Hold on. Lansoprazole <coughs> will not irreversibly inhibit the H plus K plus ATPase enzyme. It will partly reversible inhibition it will do. Lansoprazole is partly, partly it will make sure that you can reverse the inhibition. Okay. Partly reversible. Partly reversible inhibition of the H plus K plus ATPase enzyme. So, what will proton pump inhibitors do? They will inhibit the irreversibly. Irreversibly, they will inhibit the H plus K plus ATPase enzyme. <clears throat> In that omiprazole is the prototype drug. Lansoprazole will not, you know, it will only partly reversible inhibition. Partly you can reverse the inhibition caused by lansoprazole. Okay, pantoprazole you should know. It can be given IV, correct? Rabiprazole and dexrabiprazole are going to be the newer ones. Nothing more special. They are all having oral bioavailability more than the <coughs> prototype drug that is omiprazole. Then you have the anticholinergic drugs like pirenzepine and etc. So where are we? We are in peptic ulcer. Hold on. Sometimes you tend to forget where you are. To reduce gastric acid secretion, you need simetidine, ranitidine that comes under 5 the H2 antihistamines. Then you have proton pump inhibitors like omiprazole, S omiprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole, rabiprazole, dexrabiprazole. Then you have anticholinergic drugs like pirin, pirenzepine, propanthin, etc. etc. Okay, pirenzepine you can remember, right? Pirenzepine. Okay, anticholinergic drugs. Prostaglanding analog you can use mesoprostol. Okay, mesoprostol. That can. Uh, also cause abortion. You should know that. So you should not prescribe it to pregnant people. Neutralization of gastric acid. So now the acid is present. You were just trying to neutralize it. These are um, sodium bicarbonate, sodium citrate, magnesium hydroxide, aluminium hydroxide. Okay, these many you can remember, right? Systemic, non-systemic. Non-systemic means what will happen? Uh, they just go to the stomach and neutralize the acid only in the stomach. But systemic is like sodium bicarbonate. It completely um, deacidifies the body. Correct? It is because it will. It's an alkali. It's a base. Correct? So you have the systemic and the non-systemic. Then you have the ulcer protective protectives, like you have colloidal bismuth substrate. Guys, this is these are important. Very easily you can score with these. Okay. Sucralfate, sucralfate and all these are commonly prescribed. Colloidal bismuth substrate, sucralfate, all these are ulcer protectors, okay? Then you have the anti-H pylori drugs, you should write, you should write amoxicillin. These are all uh, normal 
antibiotics, correct? Amoxicillin, tetracycline, cycline, correct? Tetracycline, clarithromycin. You can write all of the antibiotics, okay? So let us revise the classification of the um, drugs used to treat peptic ulcer. Can be revised within a new slide. Okay, let's get going. Once that reduce gastric acid secretion, once that neutralize gastric acid secretion, once that are ulcer protectives and once that are anti H pylori okay drugs now coming to reduce gastric acid secretion you have four categories here you have the H2 anti histamines then you have the proton pump inhibitors then you have the anti cholinergics then you have the prostaglandin analog neutralized gastric acid you have systemic and then you have the non-systemic or the local ones okay which will act locally then ulcer protectives no category there and uh, coming to coming to h anti h pylori there also you don't have any category just antibiotics okay let us look at the details now shall we look at the details of each of these examples we look at okay basically H2 antihistamines. Give me example. Ranitidine, simetidine. Very good. PPI, omiprazole, esomiprazole, lansoprazole, pantoprazole. Then R something is there, right? What was that? What was that one? Hold on. Rabiprazole. Yes, yes. Rabiprazole and Dexrabiprazole, very good. Rabi, rabiprazole, dexrabiprazole. Anticholinergics, you have what? Pyrenzepine, very good. Prostaglanding analog, you have misoprostol. Systemic neutralizer of gastric acid, sodium bicarbonate. Non systemic neutralizer of gastric acid, aluminium hydroxide, magnesium hydroxide, very good. Ulcer protectives, you have sucralfate, colloidal bismuth. Substitrate. That's an interesting name. CBS. What is that? Colloidal bismuth substitrate. Okay. Colloidal bismuth substitrate. Then you have anti H pylori drugs like amoxicillin, tetracycline, etc. So this covers the classification of. Um, Drugs that are used to treat peptic ulcer. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.